Welcome to another bonus episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey gang, welcome back. Uh, we have been on a bit of a roll here recently with found footage fool uh looking at a couple of good movies that is going to come to an end today <laughs> as we discuss a movie called followers uh from 2017 it is um one of those to be specials that i find myself uh, falling into on occasion and the premise seemed interesting so the the premise is that you've got a couple of social media knuckleheads who, you know, big, uh, YouTube stars and that kind of thing going out to, to, uh, do a camping trip, uh, on their one year anniversary of dating. And, uh, the guy is going to pop the question. And all of this is undone by the fact that there are a couple of other knuckleheads who decide that they are going to uh, use the social media stars uh, personal information that is easily gleaned from their uh, webcasts and their their uh, social media pages and that kind of thing. And they're gonna go stalk them and frighten them and, and basically show the world, look, if you're putting all this information out there on social media, you're setting yourself up for this kind of behavior. That part of it, I'm kind of on board with. Uh, I certainly have my my own feelings about social media and the harm that it does. And I think that this, uh, th there are parts of this movie and the, the premise of the movie uh, appeal to me for that reason. So uh, that's the, the broad sweep of it. I'm obviously going to spoil this movie uh, from here on out. So fair warning, spoilers starting now. Uh, if you want to watch a bad found footage movie called Followers from 2017. So the twist of the movie is that these the two knuckleheads uh, out in the woods searching for the other two knuckleheads, all of this uh, runs afoul of some nameless cult that is just out in the woods doing their thing. And so the last few minutes of the movie really becomes both camps fleeing from this cult that we've never seen before. And we don't know what they want other than they seem to be very biblical and, you know, kind of quote the Bible and call them sinners and that kind of thing. So it's all very unsatisfying. Uh, the, the premise of, hey, we're going to track down these people that live their lives on social media that's one thing. Um, I, I can get behind that. But when you just throw in a cult for no reason and it doesn't make any sense and it doesn't matter really to the movie, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the theme of the movie, that's pretty unsatisfying. Uh, so not a great movie. Um, but we do not just subjectively say on this program, is this a good movie? Is it a bad movie? No, 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 no. We have a set of five criteria that we use to evaluate every found footage movie. And we're going to begin with criteria number one, of course, which is keeping the camera on. Does it make sense within the context of the movie uh, for the things to be recorded? And for the most part, yes. Um, the You know, because the, you're dealing with sort of the social media uh, personalities and then likewise dealing with the other two knuckleheads um, named Nick and Jake. And so Nick and Jake are the, the guys stalking the social media personalities, Brooke and Caleb. And so Nick and Jake are filming their progress because again, they're trying to show off like, Hey, if you're putting all this information out on Instagram and, uh, uh, you know, posing yourself as a brand ambassador and giving out your home address to people so that they can send you samples and stuff. Like all of this is very easy to, you know, basically track you down. And 
that I think works. Um, then towards the end of the movie, when they're running from the cult, there are those moments where you're like, eh, I think you might just abandon the camera and just haul ass and not really worry about filming any of this. Or even if you're using the camera for light, you're not going to keep recording because that's going to waste your battery and you need that for light. Um, so that's less satisfying. And then ladies and jelly spoons, um, we come to the very end of the, the movie where the lead actress Brooke sort of has a almost Blair Witch style confessional as members of this cult surround a car. And that's where we get back to the theme of the movie where she starts saying, you know, I never wanted to live this life. I just wanted to be perfect for my parents and have the perfect body and the perfect life and the perfect boyfriend. And now I'm realizing none of this was real. And again, that's fine, but it, a little too late. Anyway, uh, well, keeping the camera on, eh, three and a half, four out of five, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, characters. Are the characters compelling? Are they, are they interesting? Do you root for them? And I found there, there's a moment where Brooke is on the phone while her boyfriend Caleb has gone to the bathroom or something. And it's clear that she is having an affair and that part of a part of her relationship with him is essentially based on you know, this idea that he's kind of the perfect guy for her. He's a very handsome man. He's super athletic the way that she is. And that maybe that's not what the heart wants sort of thing. And that's interesting. But then the rest of the time, Brooke is just really vapid and useless. And, you know, not the kind of character that inspires you to root for them. You know, like when Caleb is setting up the tent, she's just searching for a signal for her cell phone. Um, it's clear that she doesn't really care about Caleb, uh, or at least not in the way that he cares about her. And for her to be sort of our final girl of the movie, eh, that's not great because you don't really have a lot of buy-in on that character up until the end of the movie when she makes all these revelations about, you know, this is not really who I am, but that would have been nice to see throughout the movie, a character that is struggling with their online persona versus who they really are. That's kind of an interesting character, but you need to uh, give us little sprinkles of that throughout the movie and not just backload it. Um, Caleb is kind of a non-entity. He's just a meathead that is in love with Brooke and wants to propose to her. Um, Nick and Jake as our two, you know, social media hunters. Um, that's kind of interesting. And in particular, the character of, uh, Nick as played by Nishant Gonya. Um, he is kind of an interesting character because he's, he's sort of the foil to Jake who is really getting caught up in, we're going to scare the shit out of him. Like I'm going to bring this gun and we're really going to ratchet this up a notch and really change things and change the way people look at social media. And Nick is more along for the ride. And, um, he is, would, is he likable? Nick is probably the most likable character. Uh, maybe it's just because I relate to him more as being kind of, <laughs> kind of a wuss when it comes to, you know, being out in the woods and, you know, hunting people and whatnot. That all seems a little shaky. But overall, I don't know that the characters give you a whole lot to hang on to. Uh, so I'm going to give that a two out of five. Then we bring, uh, then that brings us to the idea of authenticity or our third criteria. Um, is the movie authentic? Um, does it feel real? And this is another case where you sort of have actors improvising um, to some degree of success this is better than some of these movies. And when you have, you know, amateur actors, uh, doing this kind of work and eh, it's, it's a little rough in parts too. It's just a lot of spinning of the wheels. And even though they do better than average, that kind of thing still doesn't make for that interesting a movie. The problem is, uh, and there, by the way, no screenwriter listed on this movie uh, other than, 
you know, sort of the producers and directors. So I think, again, in a very Blair Witch kind of fashion, it was like, here's what you need to accomplish in the scene. Here's here's where the scene starts. At the end of the scene, we need to have, you know, conveyed this information to the audience. And then you let the actors go. And some of that works, some of it doesn't. Um, but it, it still feels too much like a movie, especially when that cult shows up and you're like, oh, this is just nonsense. This does not feel like a thing that could have happened. And it, I, I think if the directors had stuck with the idea of this is kind of two aspects of social media of, you know, the people who are the brand ambassadors and the pretty people and the, the makeup tutorial people and stuff like that versus people who are trying to get famous because they are you know, un- uncovering the dark side of the web and that kind of thing. Like, that could have been interesting, but um, this edition of The Cold just kind of undoes all of that. Uh, so, yeah, I-, I would say that the authenticity is, mm, again, maybe a two and a half out of five. Like, real, real, mid- like, there are moments where I think it kind of works, and then there are moments I-, I think it doesesn't work at all. So, a real down the middle kind of kind of five star rating there uh of of just the two and a half then we come to our fourth criteria which is watchability does all of this make for a good movie and as i've kind of hinted at that again is a real mixed bag that i'm probably going to come down more on a two uh out of five uh, when I when I think about the watchability of this movie, because there's a little too much of this, we're gonna kind of chatter at one another, and, and you know get to a couple of plot points, but for the most part, it's a lot of just wandering around. The characters are not super likable, so it is like you're not bought in on that level. Um, the plot isn't so compelling that that's pushing you through the story. Even though I think maybe the best moments are when you start to go back in time a little bit and see the characters of Nick and Jake interacting with the two, you know, social media stars, Brooke and Just, or uh, Bro- yeah, Brooke and Caleb, that scene from their perspective, scenes that you've already seen, so that you sort of understand, like, oh, they were being watched all this time, and when. Brooke heard this thing it turns out it was him and you know that that kind of thing so there's a middle section that is is pretty interesting so I'll hand it to director Ryan Justice uh, for that that there are some good ideas uh, baked into this movie it's just that the execution is never very good and uh, and and then towards the end of the movie especially but even before you get to the cult stuff it starts to run out of steam and it feels like the cult was supposed to be the thing that sort of like wakes you back up as the audience. But all it did for me was make me think that this is ridiculous. So again, a two out of five there. And then we get to um, the most important criteria for a movie like this, I think, which is the scares. And is this movie scary? No, no, not even a little bit. There's no, not really a jump scare to be had. There's... You know, there's a little bit of gore when the cult starts showing up and cutting people's throats, but it's not scary. By that point, it's just silly. You're just like, I don't understand where this half-baked Larry Fessenden and his group of followers came from. All I know is I don't like it. I want it to stop. So, yeah, that is not uh, great either. So, no, it is not scary. This is a, a solid zero out of five when it comes to scares. And when it comes to the movie as a whole, I would probably give it about one and a half out of five stars. It is not a very good movie. Um, Some of the actors acquit themselves reasonably well. And like I said, there's kind of an interesting bit in the middle where you're seeing a different perspective on scenes you've already seen before. But all of that is undone by the fact that it gives up on its own theme in the third act where the th- the thing should be the most significant part of the movie where you're talking about like you know yes yeah, social media is dangerous and giving up all this personal information is dangerous and it can make you a target and what happens when people that are kind of unhinged decide to use that information for their own you know ill will and then 
plus cult uh, that you don't know anything about. It's just a real disappointing turn for the movie where I was hoping like, okay, well, you know, maybe this isn't the most, this isn't the most successful execution of this idea, but at least the idea seems solid. And then when the movie gives up on its own premise, then I kind of gave up on it too. Uh, so not a great outing this time here on found footage fool. Uh, but we've had some good movies and, and there are some, uh, some other movies that I am looking forward to. Uh, to covering um, one of them I really really want to cover but it's going to require that I take more notes than I normally do for these programs and I just need to get cool with that but uh, that is probably going to happen and so what is ahead here on uh, the dark parade um, you have already heard that this week the April Fool's Day episode uh, kicking off our month of 80s slashers and their ilk um, in addition to this uh, found uh, footage fool episode, next week you are going to get happy birthday to me. Uh, you're going to get a little bit of what you're watching. Uh, and then uh, on Saturday or Sunday one, um, then we're going to be doing slasher uh, episode or season four, episode six. We're almost done with slasher on uh, Duncan and Bo come correct, AKA Duncan and Bo slash fiction. So uh, not necessarily a dark parade thing, but if you're listening to this, you might enjoy that as well. And uh, that'll do it for this time. Uh, as always, thank you so much for uh, supporting the show and listening to these, you know, bonus episodes about my obsession with found footage movies and how it rarely leads me into a good place. But I appreciate uh, you coming with me. Misery loves company, as they say. And so I appreciate your company for uh, these episodes. And, uh, and that'll do it this time. So, uh, as always, thanks for listening and thanks for joining the dark parade. We'll see you soon. <laughs>